Saturday and we've been stopped in our tracks again or rather I have because the people that we were coming up in the locks with the other day <coughs> um, at one point he came into a lock at a awkward angle and a bit too fast and we've just found out that the back wheel of my bike was bent and there's nothing to be done about that except to buy a new one we're at Milton Keynes and we've rung every cycle shop and there's only one that has what is a very bog standard back wheel in stock and they're sort of in the middle of Milton Keynes and the canal goes all around the edge of it so Henry is trying to find a way of fixing my old wheel onto his bike to get it to the cycle shop because it's got a cassette gear thing in the middle and he hasn't got the tools to take it off so it's a very awkward thing to cycle with a wheel but he's going to give it a go How'd you get on? Got one. Excellent. And new tyre, how much did that cost? Um, well, they haven't got a new tyre. Um, they only have, um, they haven't got one that's got tread on it. So oh. um, that's the original. Oh, okay. So, um, it's uh, 80 something. Oh, I owe you 20 something. Okay. It's a nice piece of art, isn't it? We've been cruising all day, nice and slowly. We've had one lock so far coming out of Milton Keynes, well, quite a way after Milton Keynes. And it's become very rural. It's lovely, a real Sunday feel about the place. Um, we're coming down to Stoke Bruin. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, which is a real uh, canal-y sort of place. They've got everything there, tunnels, locks, pubs, and we've got to do about five locks before we get into it and we're hoping to find a nice place to moor there. The Canal Museum is there so we can go and take a look at that tomorrow before we go through the very long Lisworth Tunnel which is going to be the longest tunnel that we've done so far. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's down there. The museum is a proper little potted history of the canals. These are the navvies in a little diorama that dug it all out by hand and pick. These are the different types of barges that plied the various wares up and down the canals. And then the decorative art that they had on their boats to make them feel more at home. Very ornate, still fashionable these days. And then the, the laced plates, that's a curious thing. But most interesting to me was this group of people, important people on the canal at different times in history. And there's a book here which goes through the photographs and tells you how each one contributed or made a mark or was involved with the canals. I really like I really like this, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
This was called a starvation barge because of the ribs that you can see. And right next door in the boat in, we found Northamptonshire Skittles. That <laughs> <laughs> doesn't count. It does. And outside a canal shop full of all the sorts of brick and brack you don't want to load your boat up with. First thing Monday morning and we're just making our way into Stoke Brun and we're going to go through the tunnel. On the way, I found loads of pineapple weeds grown by the side of the locks. It's everywhere at the moment. And it's great to make a tea as an aid to sleep. I have a little cup in the evenings. You can dry it so it will last for ages. And it smells just like pineapple. And that's what it looks like. And here's Stoke Bruin, still sleepy at yeah half eight in the morning. This is the first tunnel where we've not been able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's amazing here. It's so neat. It's, oh, it's suddenly become very bright down there. I think there must be another boat on its way in. You can only imagine the engineering to get something like this made. It's incredible, really. And of course it would have been legged before they had engines. It just blows my mind thinking of men doing that. It's really difficult to tell how far away the boat is. The light gets brighter and then fades again, but it can't be far off. Five minutes later and it still seems far away. It's an optical illusion. No, it's definitely closer now. It's not going to be much room to pass. Well, we've passed them. Their tunnel light was fixed directly ahead, which was totally blinding. So they're having a bit of a conflab about it down there now. And finally, we come to the end. That took a bit longer than we thought. It was just over 35 minutes. Well done. Are you all wet? Uh, it sort of went either side. There was um, another boat coming through behind the first one and they crashed into us with a lot of apologies. 
but they had their tunnel lights set straight ahead as well it's really bad move you need to have them up to the sides because otherwise they blind people coming towards them and you're bound to get a collision then aren't you well it's a high boat company isn't it right yeah you think they'd know better wouldn't you Now we're chugging through the East Midlands, that liminal place between the south and the north. Beautiful countryside around here, it's very soft and gentle. Tomorrow we'll be going past Braunston. Braunston will be about four miles to our left as we branch off up towards Leicester. But we may have to cycle down to Braunston to Midland Chandlers because our tiller arm is making a a sort of squeaking noise which may be a bearing or something I'm not sure it just started happening a couple of days ago so Henry's been oiling it but it's still doing it when you pull it from the right to the left it makes a sort of uh, sound like a little foghorn going off so he's not looking forward to having to dismantle that and try and figure out what it what it is if it is just the the bearings it's not too difficult to to sort Meanwhile, we're just enjoying today. It looks quite dark, but it's nice and warm. It's just peaceful and nice just to look at everything around us. Now we've been stopped in our tracks by a boat across the water, but there is someone up there. Oh, they're trying to pole themselves off by the look of it. Henry's going to go up the front and see if he can help them rescue it. Poor bloke is poling it off and got the engine running and all sorts, but it seems to be very stuck. Two boats attached to each other. The more he pushes and the more he pulls, the stucker he gets. And we're not really in a position to do much to help. It's very unwieldy. I, I think he must have been going along in front of us and then one of the boats has grounded, I think. And finally, with much pushing and pulling, it looks like they're off. And on the right is passing a lovely couple we met, Andy and Eric who have got the narrowboat bug and are hiring a couple of times a year, waiting for retirement when they can get their own boat. Wow, that's the most spectacular display of foxgloves ever. We moored last night in this fabulous spot and we're stopping today, having a day off from driving to do a bit of maintenance. So we're within a four mile cycle of Braunston if we need to go to the Chandlers but there's something wrong with our tiller arm. I don't think it's a serious problem. Um, it's possible that the um, the skeg has taken a bit of a knock in her lock uh, and slightly pushed the uh, alignment of the rudder out. But there doesn't seem to be a great lot of play in the top bearing. However, I'm going to take thing? it apart anyway. Yeah. Come on in. It's making a creaking sound when we pull it from one it's direction to... a vibrating to sound. A vibrating sound, ah. It echoes through the boat. It sounds a bit like a foghorn. <laughs> Not that loud, but... As there wasn't anything wrong with the tiller arm, we decided to keep on moving. Um, and we've come up the Leicester arm, so all the wide beams will stop now as it's single locks. 
and we've come to uh, after just going past Watford Gap we've come to the Watford locks which is a staircase lock but you have to be assisted up and down them I think there's seven altogether there's one boat going up and there's two coming down so we've got to wait until the lock keeper says we can go And that's our last lock up and out. They seemed very quick to fill when they're single locks after all the doubles we've done. Under the M1, busy busy. And as it's going across us that means we'll be going away from it shortly. popular here and there's a space down there with our name on it well that's it thanks for watching please subscribe and we'll see you on the next video bye for now